The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 23rd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. If you got a question but you can't call in, well, we can answer that for you. Just send that to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green out there. You've got all the U.S. indices, all the sectors inside of the uh, inside of the uh, S and P 500 trading to the upside. Now, that's kind of interesting out there, and at least it was as of about uh, 10 minutes ago. And we'll, we'll, I'll show you that, and then we'll go to our first caller out here. But if we take a look at what I say most interesting, well, let me get out of here. There's the, the sectors inside the S and P 500. But here's the S and P 500. I want you to notice all the way up at the top. Those are the market breadth dials. So in the face of this nice rally that we're having inside the ES Mini, we are market breadth negative for the 60-minute 240 daily and weekly time frame. Let me just click on this just to make sure there's no issue out here. Mm -hmm. Totally. So here's the details behind that. 60-minute, 88 above, 312 below. That's not great. Four hours, 130 above, 210 below. A little bit better, but still not great. Daily. 65 above, 187 instruments below profile out there. We should expect and anticipate a choppy market. Now, the weekly time frame, one, uh, 49 above, 254 below. Now, here's where it gets very interesting because now we take a look at the NDX 100. It's bullish for all four time frames out there. So will this market really head lower if the NASDAQ is headed higher? Look, on a 60-minute time frame, it's 47 above, 31 below. On a... Four hour time frame, 26 below, 41 above. Daily time frame, 35 above, 17 below. And finally on the weekly, 27 above, 19 below. The NASDAQ 100 is super bullish. And this is not just dealing with the you know top 10 instruments or what have you. This is dealing with the entire um, uh, the, the entire grouping out there. So we've got a market that's kind of uh, hard to make heads or tails of. That being the case, though, we'll do the best we can. But first, let's go out to Marvin in Trenton, Tennessee, who wants to take a look at soybeans. Martin, or Marvin, thank you very much for the call. How are you today? Hi, hey, I'm fine, Steve. And I want you to let you guys know we everybody appreciates y'all so much. And uh, well, you're thank you. such a benefit to us. I help a lot of farmers here when the farm in business. And could you check on that November, or do you, it don't matter, the soybean market, and see where your big target is down there on that, please, sir? Yeah, sure. So when I take a look at soybeans, right now soybeans, we're, we're trading the uh, May contract. It's in a big, what we refer to here technically as an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Today, as an example, um, it is a, it is attaining the 1.618 expansion level. What that means, Marvin, is we measure the A to B run, and then uh, once we know that price uh, uh, level, 
We can then expand that by uh, Fibonacci expansions, 127%, 161%. So what we're looking for here, the question is, where is this headed to now? In the case of soybeans, what I would be waiting for is some type of bullish reversal candle. When that forms, this would then generate a buy the D point pattern or a Gartley buy pattern. There's really no way for me to um, you know, anticipate when that's gonna happen. Instead, what we wanna know is what to look for. So what we'd be looking for here is some type of bullish reversal candle. Now, what I want to do on my other charts out here is see if I can uh, I can pull this up and possibly get some longer term time frame. So, give me just a second. Well, first, any questions about? Are you able to see this chart, by the way, uh, if oh, you're watching yes, us? Please. Okay, so you've got the chart, so you can see where we're at. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, as far as where is this likely headed to, you know, it's certainly this uh, level of swing points down here in about the, um, let's just call it the 1386-ish type area out there. I'm not saying that's where price is going to head to because if a bullish reversal candle were to form, well, then that would give us the buy point. But let me switch over. Let's take a look. Let's move over from here. Well, I guess I have – no, I don't have that. Let me switch over from this set of charts over to my white background set of charts because there we also have some other patterns that are worthwhile for us to take a look at. So as an example, soybeans, the May soybean contract is extremely bearish. Now, I guess you didn't need me to tell you that. But from a technical standpoint, yesterday should have been the bottom. Now, the reason I say yesterday should have been the bottom or could have been the bottom was because it was a TD9 count. It was the final TD9 count low out there, which can form on the bar following bar number nine. And that's what in fact what took place. So now it could be a big rally that stages today. I doubt it. But if price were to close back above yesterday's low at 1443 and a quarter, then you'd have a TD9 count bottom pattern. But this tells us about strong momentum to the downside. Can you add maybe a little bit of um, um, a little bit of uh, maybe reasoning behind what you what is it that you guys see out there fundamentally that is driving soybeans lower because even on the weekly chart I don't have any kind of support out here and we're now below monthly support which was at 1449.85 so the charts are not looking good is there something fundamentally going on you know since you're you're closer to it we're just looking at charts here uh, no sir everything looks like it's going to be a good crop i mean you know the, we got plenty of water last year we didn't have any water but we still made a good crop so i'm looking for a big crop but i'm not wow. sure it's the dollar or what's causing this i'm just going to see what your big red line is down there on your <laughs> oh your, uh, well that all the way on this on weekly your, chart on the weekly oh. yeah oh, that's down at 1183 i mean that's that's a gigantic move to the downside yeah from where we're at right now there you go yeah, so I, I um, let me see if uh, let me just try to understand if we have any seasonal data. Let me just move this over here. Oops, that's not, I'm on the wrong wrong tab. Give me a second to pull this over, just out of curiosity, if we can find uh, soybeans. So let me see if they've got that here. In we got wheat, soybeans. Yeah, we sure do. Cool. So on soybeans. What we can do, Marvin, is we can go back 32 years. We can just take a look at the seasonal pattern, which is where we're at right now. And actually, seasonally speaking, we really ought to be near a bottom. Oh, man, I just lost that screen. Okay, there's a problem. Um, I'm going to take this off. I don't know if that's causing the issue. I can switch to different screens out here. Um, but uh, so seasonally speaking, this is unusual, too, to see such a uh, move to the downside. So I don't have any additional information that I can share with the other one I have so far. Is there anything else that I could do for you? Uh, no, sir. I really appreciate it. And we will watch you every day. I thank you very much. You thank bet. You, that, you bet. Thank you much for the call. It was Marvin in Trenton, Tennessee. And that was a take a look. That was looking at soybeans. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at the NQs out here. It's a question from Defining Time. I want to take a look at the Qs short term. So we're going to focus on the NQ out here and get the best signals that we can for you. So here, I'm going to open up the daily time frame chart. So what you will see, that little black diagonal line triggers a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Tells us that price was moving higher with less relative energy out there. And then we get a confirmation of the uh, top out there of this uh, pattern when it forms a bearish reversal candle. Yes, it was a dark cloud cover. So that sets up the resistance level at yesterday's high, 13.082. We get a close above yesterday's high. This market wants to move higher, and we could have that large, very large A to B equals CD to the upside taking place out there. But that's your resistance area. Now, even though we got a topping message yesterday, a topping signal, topping pattern out there, what price was still doing at that stage, even with that big move to the downside, it was still trading above key support levels. Certainly, the profile, the top of the profile is a key support level. Shoot, that's all the way down to 12,296. So we're just kind of not going to pay attention to that at this stage here. But it never got below a green oscillator and change line. Folks, it's a tool that you want to have. It works for all instruments. It works for all time frames out there. And it will help you to understand when a retracement is likely just a retracement. In this case here, what the NQ was doing didn't even make its way back yesterday to that green oscillator and change line. When you are trading above a green oscillator and change line, conditions are bullish. Now, because we have a top what I do is I say, well, conditions really now are more neutral. You and I, before the uh, uh, during that first segment, we took a look at the market breadth for the NASDAQ 100. It is bullish for all time frames out there. So what price should do is at least get up to test yesterday's high. I'm not saying there's not going to be a pause during the day, but that's what price should do. And we're still within inside that swing point from February the uh, 2nd out there. So being short the NASDAQ 100 is a really difficult thing to do right now, especially with regard to uh, how, uh, how uh, 
uh, prices trading for each of the instruments uh, in relationship to their profiles for the four different time frames, weekly, daily, month, uh, weekly, daily, 240, and the 60 minute. Now, we take a look at the larger set of, uh, of uh, the NQ charts out there. And for example, uh, defining time, I have no idea what time frame, but if we was uh, that he was looking for when he says short term, but if we were to take a look at a 15 minute time frame, it's the only one right now that has a topping pattern. And that topping pattern is a TD9 count. Now, what should take place from here um, define is a move back to its oscillator and change line. Now, the oscillator and change line move, may move higher or to sideways as price is pulling back, but price should test that level. It's currently printed at 12,940. If price tests and rejects that level, that's a bullish message out there. Why would it be bullish? Well, we, we sort of just covered the green oscillator and change line. You can see on my screen that it is a green line. It is a key level of support. When price makes tops, the only real requirement or the only thing that we know is that price should then, sellers should be able to push price back to test support. And that's why it's really important to be able to understand where your support levels are. Now, you may say you don't need that. Oh, okay. I like to know when the information is fully available to us, where is it that buyers and sellers are lined up? I think that you would like that as well. We certainly do that here during the entire show. In this case, here on this 15-minute chart, we know, at least at this moment in time, as of 1121, where there's no new profile for a 15-minute chart, if price closed below that 12,941, that would be telling us its price target would be down at 12,849. That's the top of the this 15-minute uh, profile that is in place as we speak right now. So from a very short-term standpoint, we'll use a 15-minute chart, we should see a stalling of price or price point back. Now, the other beauty of this, at least from a 15-minute standpoint, is if we get a close above today's high, and that level is, let me give you that number, you should have that on your pad of paper out there, is 13031. You get a close above that, we're headed back to test yesterday's high. I can't say for sure, but it would sure seem very, very, did I say very? I mean very logical that that would be the outcome. So you know what to look at with regard to a 50-minute chart to the upside and to the downside. Anything else confirming that? Not really. We're just getting back into yesterday's high, but on a two-hour time frame, we're above profile, bullish, no topping signal. A 60-minute time frame above profile, a 30-minute time frame above profile, the same with regard to 240, and the same with regard to the five-hour time frame chart, which is the same for the daily time frame chart. You kind of get the picture out here. The NASDAQ 100 is bullish, but the question will be, what happens when price gets up to, should it be able to get up to, and test yesterday's high? You get a close above that, folks, then it is all out in bullish territory for the NDX 100. So right now, from a short-term standpoint, you just simply want to watch the high of the day, and then you want to watch that 12, 940-ish area on any kind of a pullback out there. So defining time, I hope that helps answer your question with regard to the Qs, which is a totally different answer than we might give you with regard to the ES Mini. But in my opinion, it's the Qs that will drive the market more than the S&P 500 out there. That's just Stevie's opinion. I can't really prove that. But what I can do is we can go take a look at the SMHs. Oh, NVIDIA. We'll start with NVIDIA. So this is for Nicholas. Wants to take a look at NVIDIA and the SMHs. So this is a pretty good feel as to what uh, markets might want to do. So with regard to NVIDIA, it is negating, as we speak right now, a close tomorrow above last week's high. And it sure looks like that's going to take place. Last week's high is at 263.99. We're 274.20 right now. This is telling us about a really strong upward momentum move for NVIDIA specifically on a weekly time frame. That says we should head to higher price. Now, I don't want to be foolish and say I'm going to overlook swing points and so forth because I'm not going to. So there is a swing point, possible resistance level, and that's up at the price point of 289.46. Uh, so, but, but still bullish. The daily is bullish. Yeah, it's got a bunch of roads, momentum indicator signals that have been triggered, but there's no bearish reversal candle. So it's just a sign that kind of says, hey, if you're going to go outside, take your umbrella today because it could start raining. That doesn't mean it's going to rain. That doesn't mean you're going to use your umbrella. So right now in a daily time frame, very bullish. Weekly, very bullish, very, very bullish. And the monthly chart is bullish out here. So if you're to ask Stevie son, where is it that NVIDIA is headed to? Odds favor. It's headed up to 289.46. We will respect that uh, swing point high out there. So we're going to say it's between 289.46 and 289.46. How about that? So that actual high, that swing point matches that TD9 count breakdown level. So NVIDIA headed higher. Nicholas. Now, you also want to take a look at the SMHs. So that, you know, the SMHs are also going to bode well 
for the NASDAQ. Well, it turns out the SMHs yesterday also generated a Rhodes momentum indicator top, but price did not get below any level of support, whether it was the oscillator and change line or certainly the top of its profile. And as we speak right now, price is trading above yesterday's high. And a close above yesterday's high, which is 260.88, that tells us we want higher price. It negates a, uh, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top and tells us about a strong bullish market out there. So with regard to the SMH on a weekly time frame, they have an A to B equals C to the upside that gives us a price projection area of about 264. That doesn't mean that's where price will stop. Uh, it just means that's the one-to-one -one price projection. If we look at the uh, monthly chart, for the SMH is beautiful TD9 count bottom, same as on the weekly chart. I know the same was on the daily chart at those lows. And now price above a monthly green oscillator and change line. The SMHs have not been above a green oscillator and change line since December of 2021. And it's March of 2023. So the SMHs on a monthly chart are telling us it wants higher price. The tar price target is between 280 and 290. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at Mosaic for Duncan Steve, UEC for Seven in the Den, and ALCS for Tim by email. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. I don't know if you do much of the grocery shopping. I do a lot of it uh, for us. And uh, uh, one of the things that so, so there's two things I'll just share with you. Uh, I purchase uh, Zephyr Hills water. So if you live here in Florida, you know, that's kind of like the uh, local state of Florida. 
Here's our frills is up towards uh, Tom, Tommy up towards the uh, Tampa area. Uh, I tested all the waters out there. Well, this is a couple years back. When I mean all the waters, I bought each different brand. You know, went to Whole Foods, bought all their stuff. And what I did was I tested it for pH. I was looking to um, to uh, uh, you know use the uh, uh, the highest pH. Uh, water that was available. Even there's waters that are advertised as pH. You can just go get those little strips, right? Those little urine uh, strips or what have you, and you just put the water on it, and you'll see what the actual pH is. Turned out that Zephyr Hills was even producing a higher pH than my own internal system out here. So we just kind of switched over to that. It's now up to, for I think like a 24 pack, it's up to, it, it was buying it for like 350 maybe, and it's now up to nearly nine bucks. It's insane. The, the other thing is uh, I eat a lot of oysters. Uh, I like oysters, I should say. And, and if I'm hungry and I'm just looking for something in a pinch, I got a little bit of hunger, sometimes I'll go to a can, little can of smoked oysters. I know a lot of people get turned off by uh, tins or what have you, but I, I love them. What's going on with smoked oysters? I went to three different grocery stores uh, yesterday. I went to Whole Foods. I went to Fresh Market. I went to Publix. That's our main grocery. All of them were out of uh, smoked oysters. But luckily, Amazon had them. I don't typically order food from Amazon out there, but in any event, you don't want to hear about that. What you want to hear about is Mosaic, which is next up on our charts here, and that is for Duncan Steve. And Duncan, when I take a look at Mosaic, we've got a nice TD9 cow bottom that took place four days ago. You now have a new profile that is in place, so you have support at 4381. I mean, your real support is going to be your TD9 count low, and that is at uh, 4289. But you've got profile support at 4381, so that's a helpful thing, and you have resistance up at the 4658 level. That is where Mosaic should target. That's both the top of its profile and about where the red oscillator and change line is hanging out at. On a weekly basis, price is just at the bottom of its profile where it found support, so nothing broken there. And on a monthly basis, it, it has tested several times this 4273 area out there. That's the center of that monthly profile. It did it back in uh, July of 2022. I did it back in January of 2023. So that seems to be a pretty solid area of support for you. If you are long this instrument, I would stay uh, long this instrument. If you are not long, I'd say you can get long right about now. Why right about now? Well, if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, this formed a TD9 count bottom at 10 o'clock this morning. And that has held out here. Now, of course, you'd love to see this close above 4550. If it closes above 4550, it tells us we're, we're, we should be back on our merry way to the upside. So Mosaic looks pretty good. If you're looking to get into it, you had price get back and test the bottom of its profile on a 30-minute time frame chart. It was also forming a bottoming pattern. That's what you like to see for an instrument that you want to take a long position in. So that was Mosaic from Duncan Steve. Duncan, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. The next request coming in from uh, seven inside the Tiger's Den, UEC. My son used to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, play hockey with a, a kid. His last name was Severn or something like that. He was a big, this one they were when they were young, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, kind of age group up there. And he was uh, one of the world's best uh, uh, kneeboarders, I believe. Or, uh, you know, it's called kneeboarding or, you know, behind a, behind a ski boat out there. In any event, Seven doesn't really care about that. What Seven wants to know is what's going on with regard to UEC. So let's stay on track here, Stevie. UEC, if we take a look at it, it's trading right now at 287. Uh, it is uh, below really all support levels with the exception of its breakout area on its weekly time frame. So 274 is going to be a key area to watch, Seven. If price closes below that, then more likely than not, price will head down to 228. Now, let me just open up this daily time frame chart up here. I just want to take a quick peek at something. Let's get it. So it completed that uh, TD9 count top, and that's led to this move to the downside. Just looking to see if there's really any kind of significant A to B equals CD pattern. Not really. You know, on, so on the weekly chart, I think the pattern is really more so on the weekly chart here. If we just expand this out because we can see this little clear consolidation pattern out here. So let's just say that's the consolidation, and price is broken through there. So you have support at 274 then at 188 and then at 87 cents. Now, if we assume this is a real break of this consolidation and we move that down to about like here or so, that tells us that uh, where price might want to target is a buck 32. 
So 274 is a level of support. Now, when, when price gets back to a level of support, that's very clear to us on a weekly basis, we would like to see some type of bottoming signal on a daily time frame. And we just don't have that. So I think you need to stay away from uh, Uranium Energy uh, Corp out there, at least for the time being. If you are long, I wouldn't close out that position unless you got a weekly close below 274 out there. So seven, I hope that that helps with the information you were looking for. Thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in from Tim M. Tim writes in and he wants to take a look at ACLS out there. And ACLS is Excellus um, Technologies out here. Trade out at 135 and change out here. And the question is, you're looking to take a long position. So you're going to have to wait for a retracement. Maybe you get a retracement. So this has, this still has a daily uh, TD9, a uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Only a close above the bear shooting star, which is at 135.96. We're at 135.59 right now. 135.96. If price close above that, that tells you we're headed higher. So now the issue that you've got, Tim, is really your entry area was after that uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicator top was the bottom of its profile. And so you missed out on that opportunity. That was on March the 13th. Now you've got to wait for the next opportunity. So there's the potential because price is dealing with that resistance. It's dealing with TD9 count resistance as well at the same number, I presume. That's at the 135.96 area. So, um, so there's the possibility that maybe this is some type of little consolidation. But if, close, if price closes above those levels, uh, this thing is taking off and headed higher. I don't have a resistance level on the monthly time frame. So what would we do to try to figure out where this thing is headed to? About the best thing that I can do, I'll switch over to the uh, black background charts. I'll go to the monthly base so we can draw in the A to B equals CD pattern. And that will give us some price projection levels. So let's go do that. Let's open up this chart. Let's go ahead. We can uh, see the uh, B point, the A, the A point that we're going to use. I think that's pretty evident. It's going to be the slow out here that started a trend line on March of 2020. That's your A point. That's what we need that to put an A. Our B point is going to be this high that formed back on March the 1st. Price pulls down into this trend line support level in July of 2022. We are now at the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD expansion. Notice how price still remains on the left-hand side of this C to D leg. This tells you that on a monthly basis, what Excellus Technologies has is a very strong momentum move. It will not surprise me that this instrument gets up and targets that 160.88 level. That's the 1.618 area. So I realize you want to try to get in on this action out there. I think you've got to go to short-term type time frame charts. Oh, did that not even? Oh, my goodness. Let me go back here. I see that, that I hit the button and it didn't work, but here it is. So here you can see the A to B equals CD. All right, that's pretty evident. I think everybody would pretty much draw that pattern in there. Notice how price is along the strong side of that C to D leg. The importance of maintaining that A to B angle wherever you place the C point. If you don't, yeah, you're really you losing the benefits of the uh, pattern out there. So you don't want to do that. Um, so um, that, so now back to, okay, so what do you do if you want to get in a short position? Uh, a, you want to get into a long position other than just holding your nose. And I don't want you to hold your nose and jump into the deep end, knowing that we still have a TD9 count on the weekly and a rose momentum indicator on the uh, top. But we can see that this morning, was it this morning? Yeah, uh, yesterday afternoon at 4 p.m., price pulled back on a 30-minute basis, right to support, 131.26. So I hope that helps you out, Tim. you got to be patient out here. Watch those short-term time frame charts for some type of entry pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still a sea of green out there in the indices, the sectors inside the S&P 500. At the moment, we're going to go take a look at ticker symbol BTI, BTAI, Bachman Turner, not overdrive, that's for sure, uh, but uh, Bioxyl Therapeutics. It's trading right now at about $18.27 out here. Um, it is, uh, the question is, has this found a bottom? And that is from a guppy inside the tiger's den. And certainly there's an A to B equal CD to the downside pattern here. It's already at the 1 to 1.2618 level. But what's missing is a bullish reversal candle. What you do have is you have a new profile. That new profile gives you a support level at the, uh, let me tell you, I'm just going to, it's at uh, 1820 a support, resistance 2038 and 1984 out there again the top of the profile in the center area so that's your resistance and at 2074 which is red oscillator and change line uh, so no bottom on the daily no bottom on the weekly and prices trading below the bottom of its profile level a close below 1861 that's going to suggest lower price again we're waiting for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame the monthly chart is consolidating with inside its profile it does look like it wants to go target the low of that profile that's at 1654 so we've got uh, 1654 1681 as a couple of possible destination areas on the daily time frame chart the next level of breakout support is down at 1480 two so no bottom yet if you did see a bottom and perhaps one of the things that you want to do out here or consider doing mcguppy is if we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart if you were just to go back and identify your td9 counts and here i'm going to give them to you so you can put this on your chart for a 30 minute basis you want to write down the numbers 1989 1889 1991 1995 2253 2849 and 2172 now, the reason is what we can see here, even on a 30 minute basis, and again, this is one of the benefits of the TD9 count pattern, is it helps us to establish objective, not subjective, but objective levels where price breaks out from and where price breaks down from. 
and it's natural for price that's breaking out for that area to be tested. It's natural for price that's breaking down for bounces to test those areas. When price can close above those areas, that tells us, at least for that time frame, a change in trend. If we're going to see a change in trend on a daily basis, we're certainly going to see it on the short-term time frames first. So here on a 30-minute basis, if you could get BTAI to close above 1889, that might be our first indication that there is, and it's trying to at least form some type of bottom out here. Now, granted, there was a slight close above uh, the uh, breakdown level of 1995 at 10 o'clock in the morning back on the 21st of March. But that was also bar number nine of a TD9 count. So we got to give it a little bit of wiggle room there. And certainly what that did was that took price all the way back to it's a breakout area. That's at 1779. So certainly you want to watch that to the downside, 1889 to the upside. But again, on the daily, weekly, monthly, we just don't see any bottom for you here just yet. And that is ticker symbol again, BTAI. That is a bioxyl therapeutics. That was from a guppy inside the tiger's den. Dan wants to take a look at Vuzi, V-U-Z-I. So let's go see what B-U-Z-I is doing right now, trading right at the top of its daily profile, Dan. And that's at about the 403-ish type area out there. So the top of the profile, just so you make sure you've got these jotted down on your pad of paper, 404, that's resistance. You got another kind of resistance here at 388, but you're above that and support at 372. That's what we see. Now, do we see some kind of a bottom pattern out here in this instrument? And certainly I see a confirm by the D point pattern. A, where my cursor's at, B, all the way down here at the low on a daily basis of February 14th, about a three day rally into a high that forms on February 16th. That set up the the C point of the A to B equals CD. You got a nice big old bullish engulfing candle here on March the 13th. That sets up your ultimate support is really the low of that candle session, which is at 347. So right now you've got a buy the D point pattern with price that has been consolidated with inside its daily profile for about eight or nine trading sessions out there. So just got that good old fashioned consolidation going on. If we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, at least price is above the red oscillator and change line, but it's below profile levels here. So you really need some help from the daily time frame. I don't see much on the uh, monthly time frame chart. So it's really all about the strength of the daily, uh, uh, Dan, and you really like to see this close above that 404 level, the top of its daily profile. And the last time that it was up here, well, there were two times. It was on November, I'm sorry, March 17th, volume here about a little over 1 million shares the day before that, 800,000 shares so far today. You're up with 318,000 shares in two hours of trading, three times two, good. Uh, you know, you're about a million shares. So it's, it's not like there's any significant volume as this is pushing to the upside. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Vuzi out there. Let's take a look and see if BUZI uh, has any kind of uh, historical data that we can see what its seasonal trends are. So BUZI, yep, we certainly do. Let's see how much uh, data that we can uh, put in here. We've got 12 years worth of data. Now, Vuzi typically moves lower. It's in its unfavorable seasonal cycle, which for it begins right around the middle of February, and it ends right around the end of April. And then it makes a, a move, gets into a favorable seasonal cycle into the uh, about July 4th, and then it makes a, a beeline really into the October time frame out there. If we take a look at March, you can see March is the second worst performing month, or has been, over a 12-year period of time, and uh, the, the, the worst month has been July out here. So that's what we see when we take a look at Vuzi, Dan. Hope that that helps you out, and best of luck to you with that trade. Uh, we've got another request to take a look at, uh, not another request, we have another request. And that request is to take a look at John Deere. DE is the ticker symbol. This comes in from Hector and Patty. And uh, Hector writes in, happy Thirsty Thursday. It is. I am a little bit thirsty. Hey, by the way, tomorrow I'll record the show between 8 and 9. We'll be heading over to um, to uh, Naples to uh, celebrate my mother-in-law's 95th birthday out there. And the struck, she's in pretty good health. She gets along on her on her own. She, you know, we've tried to get her to move in with us for for years. She just doesn't want to do that, which is great. She's getting along, right? She's getting around, and uh, she's in an independent uh, care facility, so it's great. She's doing all kinds of, uh, you know, making jewelry stuff like that, drinking, of course, and. Uh, so we're going over there to 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 share her birthday uh, with her, obviously. And uh, but the issue that I'm having with uh, with her, if it, if it's an issue and it is an issue, is she struggles to. Uh, her, her, she she says, "Why am I still here?" Kind of like she doesn't want to be here. Of course, every time she brings that up, I say, "Esther, 
uh, you and I, we're not having that conversation. I do have the conversation to tell her why she's here, but she sort of doesn't want to hear it. But it doesn't matter. In any event, let's go take a look at uh, John Deere out here for Hector and Patty. And uh, the question was, could Deere also give our farmers a clue as to when soybean market might turn around? That I don't know. Is deer in a current buy the D point uh, uh, pattern out here? So if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, I'm just going to expand this chart out. And on a daily time frame, we certainly have an A to B equals CD pattern out here. And we do have a uh, rising window that took place a couple days ago. So that would confirm that pattern. Let me just make sure. Um, yeah, I, I see it. I, I, I see the A to B equals CD. So what you really need John Deere to do, or D Deere itself, is you really need to see this get above and stay above its red oscillator and chain sign. That's where it's trading into right now, which is 398.46 out there. So yeah, you've got a bottom. Price is at a key level of resistance. It needs to get above that. If it does get above that, then we're likely headed to the 415.85-ish type area out there. And um, that's what I see on the daily time frame. On a weekly time frame, what do we have in John Deere? Simply price pulling back to test support. And uh, this had a uh, confirmed sell the D point pattern. And price pulled back last week, tested support. Bottom of its profile, 387.20. So right now we just have a good old fashioned consolidation with inside that profile. Hector, on a monthly basis, things are, the momentum has stalled. There's price below that green oscillator change line. Watch the daily out there. And uh, you have a, uh, a wet Thursday. See you with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Coder, John C., uh, Duncan, um, uh, uh, Dan in the den. You know, I, I tell I tell her all those things all the time. Mr. Bill, you know, all those things. that uh, She is my resource to be able to talk to somebody about the uh, Great Depression. You know, she was young, obviously, at that time. Uh, but she lived through that time period out there. And we and, and, and we need, I've asked her to write books, all those kinds of things. So when, when I struggle with stuff like that, like David's death, uh, my mother-in-law, I, 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 I fall back to three different books for my spiritualness, if you will. These are great books here. The first one is The Secret Teachings of All Time. Now, this was a book given to me by, by my grandfather, was given to him. Uh, it's, this is a collector's uh, book right here. This is probably worth about four or $5,000, this edition of this uh, book. But I, the other day, I found it. They have a, a paperback copy. You can buy it for like Five bucks or ten bucks or fifteen out there. This is a very cool book. It's really in depth out there, and uh, you really understand how many religions around the planet there are, and all kinds of things. The other book I look to is Jim Rohn. So I, I love Jim Rohn, and, and just this little book here, Treasury Quotes. Um, you know, kind of like Tom Reads is uh, for uh, for um, uh, what is it called? For uh, I forget that, but you know what I'm referring to. I almost sound like Joe Biden right now. Um, and the other one, this is a great book here, and this one I, I always go back to. It's called The Laws of Life. And by John Templeton. And, and these are great resources. These are great books that I would recommend for you out there. But now we're going to go take a look at Netflix. So we'll go from uh, books, if you will, to uh, Netflix out here. Uh, this is for um, SNP, I think, inside the Tiger's Den. And with regard to Netflix, right now, you've got it. It looks like you're going to get an A to B equals CD to the upside. Volume on the B point out there was 7.9 million shares so far in about a little over two. You're already above that with trading. So you've got A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, the one-to-one -one price projection, I'll give you an approximate uh, area out there, approximate because we're kind of, you know, time-strapped here, and so I'm not using my exact tools, but grab this, would you? Grab it. Come on, Stevie. There we go. So your one-to-one -one price projection, not much further than where we're at, about the 325 level, but I would say more likely than not. Amazon targeting 349 is TD9 count breakout level. 337.02 is another area of support. That's the weekly center of its profile out there. So uh, Netflix looks pretty solid and strong. Folks, uh, please tune in tomorrow. Uh, between 8 and 9, we'll be recording at them, but I'll do everything I can to make it as pertinent for you between this time frame of 11 to 12. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care.